So, hello. Oh, this is a talk on Pandora Build. If you're not here for a talk on Pandora Build, um, then you're in the wrong place, or you're just hacking on your laptop and wanted a place with power and a nice cushy seat, which is fine. Um, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, my name is Monty. Uh, I work on the Drizzle project, uh, which is a fork of MySQL, which is not what this talk is about, um, although I may make it about that because I don't really seem to have the ability to talk about anything else um, these days. Uh, but effectively, this is, um, yes, as the title says, it's going to be a talk on uh, some stuff I've been working on in and around everybody's favorite auto tool. Um, brings us to the first question. How many of you actually use auto tools in your projects? Yeah, yeah, most of you. How many of you enjoy using auto tools? <laughs> How many of you understand using auto tools? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God there's at least one of you. Uh, feel free to, to call, uh, call bullshit on me at any point in time. Um, so the, the basic problem, uh, as, as I see it, and especially as, uh, as I come across in working on various stuff, um, is that most people I encounter day-to-day uh, -day don't uh, understand auto tools, even if their projects are managed by them, um, and sort of do it by some combination of uh, copying and pasting some M4 macros off of the web somewhere and praying a whole lot, um, and then swearing, uh, and then yelling at people, and then talking about how much auto tools suck. Um, uh, sometimes all interwoven all at the same time. Um, and, uh, and as a result of this, um, people write what I see as needlessly fragile uh, and complex build systems to build their software. Uh, a really good example of this, uh, and I'm going to try my best to pick on MySQL as little as possible, and I'm probably not going to succeed at that. Um, <laughs> but uh, if, if you ever pull down the, uh, the MySQL source tree uh, and you decide to build it from source, uh, you'll notice that it, it quite happily uses autoconf and automake and libtool. Um, but the, the build system itself is such crap that there's a directory of wrapper shell scripts uh, that, that are there that they use to build it on different platforms even though autoconf detects what platform you're on and theoretically should be like injecting the right compile flags in, people run build slash compile Pentium 32 debug. Um, and then that runs a whole bunch of shell to set a whole bunch of environment variables to then inject into the autoconf build. Primarily because the autoconf thing is really, in, in that tree is really big and scary and has evolved over 15 years. And it doesn't really seem like there's, I know a couple of guys who do understand it who do not feel empowered to significantly change it, um, but basically most of the developers themselves are terrified of touching the autocomp stuff, but they're not terrified of writing wrapper scripts to make really, 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 really long configure strings um, to, to do things. So uh, all of that, uh, I, I think, is um, suck uh, and, should be, and should be avoided at all costs. Um, I hear a lot of complaints from people uh, that, that auto tools is crap, and they say it in that way that they do, um, uh, that it implies that everybody should, uh, by default, agree with them, and there would be no other possible, uh, no other possible opinion. Um, so I'll, I'll just quote Mr. Churchill there about democracy being the worst form of government, except for all of the rest of them. Um, and, and which is the thing, is the first possible solution to fixing your auto tools build is to stop using auto tools. Uh, there are several other tools out there. Uh, I have looked at all of them, uh, and in fact, many others that aren't listed here that are sort of obscure, and one of them is just some Python scripts that some guy wrote. Um, but the, the main ones that you'll actually see people using and that I know of actual examples of people using in real life uh, are pretty much boil down to, to these. CMake is the, is the popular um, git of the moment, um, the one that everybody, everybody defaults to saying, oh, use this, uh, because it'll solve all your problems. Um, uh, and, and it doesn't for me, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, SCONS, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, is a Python-based thing uh, that's weird. Um, and I hope the person who wrote SCONS is in the room, so I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, okay, great. Uh, oh, crap, this goes up on the internet, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm screwed. Um, I, I also screwed at not offending people, I guess. Um, Jam, if anybody's ever pulled down the boost source code and built it, it has its own build system called Jam. Uh, which is actually, I believe, a re-implementation of another system called Jam. Um, 
Uh, what's that? You use the original? How? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, anyway, and then there's Ant. Uh, if there's any Java people in the room, of course, I'm sure you use Ant. Uh, if anybody's ever tried, it has extensions for building C and C++ stuff. They don't work, uh, and they're really weird. And also XML. Um, I'd just like to say for anybody that's thinking about designing a new build system, please don't use XML as the basis of it. it eh, anyway, um, what's that? Oi. <laughs> we can have that. Th that's the, this other talk I was thinking of making, um, but we won't, we won't go into that. But so of, of the four of those, I would, I would say that, that, that CMake seems to be the closest to being a, a, a decent alternative. Um, I was talking to some folks about this yesterday, and I think I've got a couple slides about this. But um, one of the, the so one of the biggest complaints that people have about Auto Tools is uh, M4, and I don't blame them. Uh, M4 is uh, a, its own special brand of crack. Um, but it is it is a thing, right? You you can learn M4, like it's it's sort of been around for a while, and it's sort of got some definitions, and it works in some definable ways, right? Um, when you write the CMake files, then you're going to write some rules to to figure out how you're going to do the things that you would normally be writing in M4 and the other thing, you're also using the sort of quasi macro-y looking language, except it's just the CMake language. It's not actually a, I mean, it is a thing. It's the CMake language. Anyway, um, I don't really think that that solves the weirdness of M4 problem. You're just introducing another language that none of your developers know how to write in. Um, so, meh. Um, also, I really don't like the way you have to put all the dash Ds in uh, to pass options to CMake when you're building it. That's too much typing. Um, anyway, uh, so things that Auto Tools, the, but these are the main things for me. Things that Auto Tools has that aren't covered by the other tools. One of them is there's a large number of tarballs you pull down that you can pretty much uh, effectively know that you want to run, configure, make, make, install, and that's how you're going to install it if you're silly enough to not be installing from devs or RPMs. Um, but you pretty much know how to do that, and most people open it up and they go, oh, okay, I know how to deal with this. And they do that, and they expect those three commands to actually do something sensible. And in most cases, other than MySQL, they do. Um, uh, the, the, and, and so much so that other things that don't use auto tools will oftentimes include a script called configure that, when, when called, even with many of the normal configure options, will then call their actual build system with the, with the appropriate, uh, the appropriate incantations, uh, because they realize that the learning curve of getting people to understand how your build system works is not something you necessarily uh, need to do every time somebody pulls down a new, a new tarball. Um, the thing, that, so that's sort of a consumer thing that I think that, that AutoConf, uh, the auto tools based builds have that other things don't. The thing as a developer that it's got that I can't live without is make this check. Um, and this is the, this is the number one reason I can't, I cannot use CMake at the moment. Is that it does not have it does not have make this check, unless, yeah. Cross compile, yes. Uh, also, cross compiling is 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 pretty important, uh, especially when you're when you're working on systems either that you don't have or that are embedded, <laughs> um, because you don't necessarily want to run a compile on your Android phone. Um, yeah. yeah. Does it does it work with the headers and stuff? Sweet. All right. Oh, good. All right. Because, yeah, we'll longer conversation about that later with somebody. Um, but uh, because that's, that's actually, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is the one major feature that, that Auto Tools doesn't, doesn't have. And, and by this, I mean it doesn't work on Windows. I don't care. But it doesn't. Um, and, and there's a whole other longer conversation about that. There's many longer conversations about most of these things that we could have for long periods of time. But I have a tendency to to talk for too long anyway. So I'm going to try and not do that. Um, AutoTools doesn't really work on Windows because AutoTools makes, I think that's the thing. Yeah, AutoTools, uh, one of its basic design principles is that it's going to run some stuff on a maintainer's machine and it's going to create um, simple uh, portable shell script code so that it can run anywhere. Um, problem with that is that these days there's really two effective platforms. There's Linux and there's Windows. Yeah, there's OS 10 and there's Solaris and stuff like that. But they have shells, so I don't really care. There's Linux and there's Windows. One of those two has a proper shell POSIX system. One of them doesn't. Um, so the, the days of yore of having all the HPUXs and AIXs and IRIXs and all of that stuff running around, they're still there sort of, but they're not really the main targets of most ongoing development these days in 
blatant honesty. And I actually also don't have them, so I don't care about them because I'm pretty selfish that way. Um, so, so all of that to say, uh, in, in looking at the possible solution to the, the auto tools complexity problem uh, of not using auto tools, um, I'm, I'm pretty much going to stick with the I'm still going to use auto tools, um, but I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to do some things to uh, make that more accessible to people uh, and make it work more uh, solidly so that people just don't uh, spend most of their time crying. Um, because I don't like crying people. Um, so uh, amongst the things that I see uh, is, is tons of boilerplate code. And even, even for me, I start a new auto tools based project and I've got to, you know, I've got to write a, a, bunch, of, a bunch of auto conf stanzas to, to drop into the thing that are all the same uh, for, for just about everything. And uh, I, I have to get them in the right order, uh, which I believe is the, is the next thing. Yeah, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff you've got to stick in there. But heaven help you if you run AC prog lib tool before you run AC prog CC, um, or if you run AC prog CC before you run AC prog lib tool. I can't remember, but it breaks, um, and and that sort of in, in, in sort of non obvious, uh, really disgusting ways uh, sometimes. So you want to you want to make sure that you get that stuff in, in the right order, but which involves basically every time you start a new project, you grab the configured AC from the last project and you copy it in and you start changing some names around. Um, and then you're like, oh, wait, I didn't need to do that in here. Or, um, or this project is not also MySQL. Um, and one of the reasons for this is, uh, one of the reasons for all of this, and the reason that it's not more, I, actually, I should inject really quickly uh, that although I'll be talking about making this stuff less complex, I, I don't think that all of these things are necessarily in, in inherent problems or deficiencies in the auto tools. It, they've been designed for a very specific purpose, um, and that purpose is, is uh, one that, for better or for worse, we have to work with. Um, so anyway, I love the guys working on this. But anyway, um, but it, it's it's a it's a set of different modules. It's actually more than this. There's auto header and, and some other stuff that 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 goes in there. Um, but the, several of these tools can work independently of the others. They're not. It's not a it's not a self-contained system. You can use autoconf without automake, right? Um, so autoconf has to do its stuff, right? And everything they have to do there is that it's a self-contained project. Um, you know, that, that does its own thing. And, uh, and then automake is the set of stuff to make autoconf-based builds uh, easier, um, it, except that it has to take into account that you might do these other things and you might want to structure your thing in this way and, you know, you might want to build everything backwards or, uh, or, or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and, and then, you know, so it's that sort of collection of, the, in, in the good Unix fashion, collection of, of tools. Um, that sort of all have to work with each other, but that means that they're designed for, for general flexibility. Um, oh, I had a slide for that. <laughs> um, so in, in my opinion, they're not actually a build system. Uh, they're a framework for building build systems. Um, uh, and as anybody who's ever worked on frameworks for building frameworks knows, um, you, <laughs> you, you get into this really wonderful thing where everything you're doing is designed to be highly parameterizable and so that you can sort of combine things in really interesting and novel ways to give your end user the ultimate flexibility because what you're enabling them to do is build the build system that they need for their purposes, um, which is great. Uh, and it's fantastic that it can do that. Um, but it means that everybody is, is building ad hoc build systems um, uh, and, 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 they're, and they're complex. So, from, so my answer to this is that in this context, for most people, there's always an exception to every rule, of course. Um, but less choice uh, is actually more easy, right? Like, we don't actually want quite that level of flexibility. It's not necessary. Uh, it, it just leads us actually to, most of the time, many of those choices lead you to breaking things rather than making extra choices that make things better. Like, most of the time, the extra choices there are just making things worse. Uh, at which point, I think I just started talking like Steve Jobs about removing choices to make products better. Um, so if, if anybody doesn't watch out, I might throw a chair at you, because um, I think that's the next step. But I know Steve Baum or Steve Jobs, they're the same person. It doesn't really matter. There's really no difference between them. They're both assholes. Um, that was really just my excuse to say that Steve Jobs and Steve Baumers are assholes on a thing that's going to go on the internet. So uh, if I'm not here next year, it's because I've been killed. Um, so. All of that gets us to uh, what, we're, what we're aiming to do with Pandora Build. Um, and the main one is, uh, and this is probably the most important one, and the rest of them are just sort of me being pedantic about things. Um, but it's to make your autoconf and automake stuff work right, and to make it work consistently 
uh, in, in a way that you can expect without you having to invent the wheel every time. Um, we want to make, uh, uh, also want to make the, the build work with reasonable, uh, reasonably existing platforms, with, with uh, re work reasonably with existing platforms and auto tools versions, which is the thing the auto tools isn't really designed to do. I'll talk about it in a second. I'll talk about actually all of these things in a second. Um, uh, want to make your build, not the build itself, but the, the building of your software work correctly, right? Because there's a there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of stuff, uh, a whole bunch of ways that you can choose to build your software, and I think that I know better than you do. Uh, so I'm just going to do it my way, uh, and you can jump on board or not. Um, uh, and I may or may not be right, but then you can file a bug, and then we can we can duke it out, and it'll be great. Um, uh, Robert has has changed my mind on a couple of things already, so I am malleable. Uh, and then I'll still be right. Um, I want to make it uh, easy or easier uh, in some of these cases to use some of the common related tools that are optional. Like not everybody's using Get Text in their projects. Not everybody's using GNU Lib. Um, but if you if you if you have ever added those to your projects, uh, you know that there's like a laundry list of stuff you got to do. Uh, and and again, like adding Get Text to your project means adding two different macro calls into your autoconf file at different places in the in the sequence. And you've got to make sure that one of them goes before some things, and one of them comes after other things. Uh, again, uh, basically, that is, is just there to fail. Um, and then, so all of this sprang out of, uh, out of working on the Drizzle project and then working on uh, the eight other related projects that were all working at the same time and me having to copy stuff around between all of the projects. Um, so various things that we're doing in, in Drizzle wind up making their way into uh, this as, as features, because that's the easiest way for me to maintain them, and that's the way these things work. Um, but so one of the things that I, that I discovered in talking with some of the PHP uh, core devs is they were, they, it, a similar problem that they've got you know, solved and everything like that, but it's a thing that they had to address, which is how do you have a tree um, that has plugins or loadable modules or something like that, that you may want to drop new, new directories of stuff into your build tree and have something magically know what to do with it um, and, and sort of have a, 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 a malleable set of modules that may or may not get built um, uh, in, a, in a sensible manner without somebody having to drop in a directory, then edit a file, or, or then do this other thing, or do these th three things. So um, uh, we also sort of want to provide at least the build infrastructure for sanely dealing with plugins. And I, and I will say, although it's mostly just the, the Drizzle plugin uh, system uh, abstracted out, there is at least one person out there using the, the Pandora plugin uh, system in his project and is very happy about it. So um, it, it, can, it can be done. He's like, oh, wait, I didn't have to write all this. That's fantastic. Um, so anyway, uh, so what I mean when I'm talking about uh, your build uh, correctness and consistency um, is there's, there's a lot of standard stuff that you do in a, in a build. One of them is finding libraries. Um, and anybody that's ever needed to add the autoconf check to finding libraries knows there's about 20 different ways to do this. And, and even, with the, even if you use one of the standard ways to do it, there's, there's about 12 things you've got to stick in there. You've got you to construct a help string, which is pretty much going to be in the form of you know, some string with dash, dash, with, dash, the thing, and then you know, some help text about it, and then it, which is going to be basically uh, build with this library or not, uh, you know, some text of that form. Um, and then you're going to put in the, the, the boilerplate code for it, and then you're going to check to see if the variable was set or you're not or it wasn't set. Uh, and if it was set, it, this is what it's going to default to. And if it wasn't set, you're going to do this. And and it's one of those boilerplate copy and paste code into your into your build uh, situations, um, which most of the time isn't interesting to do in different ways. Um, although I, I will say that uh, is this the point where I was going to pick on package config? No, I think I've got a I've got a thing for that later. Um, uh, so, so you want to you want to find those things. Uh, in in our case, we've we've built this off of a set of macros that actually come out of uh, some combination of get text and GNU lib. Um, uh, there's a macro in there, AC lib link flags. Um, but it essentially it, it does all of the work of creating the um, creating all of the help text and all of the all of the ancillary stuff in there in a consistent manner, um, so that all of the all of your optional uh, library dependencies. Uh, you can specify where they might be in, in sort of a, a reasonable way without uh, doing it uh, 20 times in your, in your project. Um, all of the standard stuff, all that boilerplate stuff that you've got you to drop in, um, for us, you just you run the one macro and it does all of it, and it does it all in the right order, and, and it works. Uh, and, and the third thing is the multi-version support, uh, which, yeah. So um, there's a, one of the other things with, auto, auto, with the auto tools is they're assuming 
uh, and, and, this, and the software is, is developed in this way, they're assuming that, that your source tree isn't necessarily going to support lots of multiple versions of, of auto tools at the same time. Uh, they're, supporting, they're, they're assuming that you've got a smaller group of core developers and that when you decide to upgrade to uh, AutoMake 110 or 111 for your project, for instance, that all your core devs can sort of be somehow cajoled into doing that or that most of the people are going to be grabbing a tarball which will have the stuff generated in it so it doesn't really matter what version of auto tools they have, which is sort of part of the thing. It doesn't matter what you as the end user have auto tools wise version installed. It's what I as the maintainer of the project have and create the, the source tarball with. Um, uh, so that's, that's sort of the way that everything's put together. The problem is, is that these days lots of people are pulling stuff out of Bazaar and Git, right? Or, or Mercurial or any of these things. And they, they are actually needing to generate those files themselves. And so you've got people who are still running on, you know, RHEL 4 and they've got old versions of AutoConf and, and you tell somebody, hey, go to your, go to your Red Hat Enterprise Linux system and upgrade AutoConf on it. And, and you'll see like eyes get really wide and they'll be like, I don't know if that's going to break anything on my system. I'd really rather not do that, uh, which is typically the response that I get. And so you've got you've to support these things, uh, which gets really tricky, I'll be honest, um, in, uh, in, in dealing with that. Um, so so one, of the, one of the main things that, uh, but well, that's sort of a requirement for us in, in Drizzle is to be able to do that. So uh, all, of the, all of the Pandora build-based stuff works properly across AutoMake uh, 1.9 through 1.11, uh, which is the versions that are out there on any sensibly recent system. Um, and by sensibly recent system, I think I'm including RHEL 4, although it may be RHEL 5, because those things are just so old. Um, uh, but we, we work on AutoConf 2.5.9 to current, uh, and both LibTool 1 and 2. Um, and if you're using LibTool 2, we'll use the newer versions of LibTool 2 things. Um, with the caveat that LibTool 1.5 using C++ is horribly, horribly broken and just doesn't work. Um, so uh, if we will detect that and punt uh, because it's completely unusable. Uh, sorry, if you're compiling with Sun Studio. Sun Studio, C++, Solaris, LibTool 1.5, fail. Um, uh, in, in, in utterly and inexorably. Um, and we can talk about that if anybody's interested, but I can't imagine anybody is, because um, who's building things on Solaris or Sun Studio these days? Anybody? Hey, I don't work for Sun anymore. I don't. I don't have to be have, have to be friendly to that. Woohoo! Um, anyway, so uh, uh, and sorry if I'm barreling through some of this. It's like I said, I tend to run over. Um, so uh, that's sort of the build system. But build system is there to build your source code because you're there actually to build software. Uh, sort of the reason for, for amalgamating some of this is that most people actually aren't interested in working on the build system. They're interested in working on the software itself. Um, one of the things that we set out uh, really early in, in uh, the Drizzle world, we haven't totally uh, accomplished this for the core Drizzle server. We have for all of the ancillary libraries that we've been working on, uh, which, is, which is to be really strict uh, in, our, in our build environments. We found that to be extremely helpful. Um, and so essentially, uh, one of the things that I'm going to do for you is set all of your flags to be really strict. Um, and it'll make your life better, and you'll like me for it later. You'll curse at me first. Um, but what's that? With W error, yeah. So this is lots of warnings on, lots of warnings equals error. Uh, it is actually possible to, to, to make your source code clean enough to compile. I have several projects doing it. Uh, they're doing all manner of crazy things. If you think that you need to do what it is that it's telling you you can't do, you actually, you, you don't. There's a way to do it, I promise. Um, so we're doing that. Uh, there's two levels of this, uh, which I'll show you in a, in a little bit, uh, because as much as I'm saying that, uh, it's our goal to, to have uh, Drizzle be able to build cleanly with this, but it doesn't because we inherited MySQL, um, and it does not build cleanly. Uh, and we're, there's, <laughs> there's only so much of that we can fix on any given day. So, um, so eventually that, that, uh, there's a less warnings option you can use. Um, uh, uh, the other thing is, is that auto tools in general is designed to be infinitely flexible, um, so you can describe pretty much any random layout of stuff that you might want to have in your, in your system. Uh, and essentially what I'm saying is uh, don't do that. Uh, there's, there's, I would say one, but there's effectively two, two different code layout possibilities that, that you can uh, use in your system. Essentially rooting all of your stuff in the, in the root directory of your, of your uh, source tree. Or if, you're, if you want to, you can have a source uh, subdirectory and all your stuff is rooted in there. Um, but so everything, there's no, there's no dash i dots. Uh, all of your include paths should be at the, at the root of the thing so that when you install the headers, you're actually using proper, uh, proper include paths so things don't have to, so people don't have to 
specify special C flags to build your, your projects, which is sort of becoming a reasonably norm these days in most of the stuff that's being installed. Um, I only care about modern systems. Uh, I'm not targeting um, a, a version of AIX from 1985 um, uh, because most of the software that I'm writing now is just, you're probably not going to be running it on there. Um, uh, and if that's a problem, I'm sorry. I, I'm, there's, there's, only so, there's only so old. In fact, uh, most of this will, not just most of it, it will completely punt on you if you don't have at least GCC 4.1, as in it will throw a build warning and say your compiler is too old. Uh, it will run on other compilers, but you know, in, in general, it just starts to get really crazy. Uh, and I can, I can strip out uh, a lot of questioning if I know that you've at least got a reasonably, I don't have to check to see if you've got printf. You know, um, <laughs> you've probably got it if you've got a decent compiler. Um, other things, OS X uh, has the ability to build multiple arches, which is a thing, and uh, yeah, it's by default. You can turn it off. Um, so by default, it's got all the guts in there to, 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 to build on multi, build multi-arch for, for OS X, uh, which winds up being a, an interesting way to get some extra testing in, uh, but is totally turn-offable. Uh, uh, three, but there's three in the in the current thing. Uh, I386, uh, 64-bit, and PPC are the are the three that it'll it'll support. Uh, not in the not in the Arch builder in the in the current GCCs for OS10. Um, I mean there are those architectures, but your choice is PPC. Uh, so, uh, but no, and actually that's a good feature request that I need to add. So thank you. Um, all right. Well, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, I'll file a bug. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a good point. No, that's a really good point. Um, I need to figure that out. Um, we also uh, bump, so Solaris builds by default, even if you've got a, a brand new a shiny Spark system. Uh, the Solaris guys are really into ABI compatibility. Um, so things build 32-bit by default uh, on, on Solaris out of the box, even with the 64-bit system. Um, so that, you know. Yeah, we build them 64, but you can disable all of that. All of these have flags uh, that get in there. Um, also, by default, we, we enable uh, good library practices like defaulting things to hidden visibility, uh, which there's a great uh, paper out there on Red Hat's site as to why that's a good idea. Also disableable, because um, Drizzle can't build that way at all. <laughs> you're, you're safe from many of these things because, because, of, because of Drizzle's inability to actually do it. So there's many... There's many like like pet cock valves that you can open up and be like, no, gosh, I can't can't handle that level of strictness. Um, and uh, Automake 111 includes a, a, a ability to do uh, more silent builds that look similar to the Linux how the Linux kernel builds. You know, so to be like CC and then the name of the file and just a thing so that it's readable down there. That's turned on by default uh, with us. It is turned offable in the exact same way that it works in the Linux kernel. Make v equals one, make v equals zero, uh, and it turns it on or off. Uh, in general, but that's that's there so that you're, if you're using a uh, modern automake, uh, your builds are called pretty, um, which is nice. Um, you can optionally add in, uh, as I said, uh, GNU lib and git text. Um, uh, there, there's just a couple little things. You still have to do the uh, git text eyes and GNU lib tool things to add the add those files to your source tree. Then it's just a simple build system wise. You just say, yeah, I've got. GNU lib or git text, and actually I'm going to fix that so that it will auto-detect that you do have GNU lib or git text already installed and do it properly, rather than asking you to tell it that, because sort of that's all the thing. It should do what it is that you need it to do. Um, the plugin stuff uh, is, is a little bit younger in terms of being able to be used effectively across multiple projects, um, although, it, like I said, it is being used by both, uh, by both us and one other person. And I'm going I'm to chat with the, the PHP folks to see if I can, if I, I can convince somebody uh, to, to migrate, although I don't know if I'll be successful. But Hartman a while back said that, that if I had a better solution than what they were doing, that he'd be really happy to look at it. So we may talk to them about that in their tree. Um, but it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's some areas where that needs to be abstracted a little bit more. And at the moment, there's setting it up involves copying a few more files than, than I would like. I, I need a nice tool that does it for you rather than and, or just works properly. Um, so there's there's some there's some bugs in that, but the the essential thing there is that the the build and tool infrastructure allows actually for two things. Um, allows you to drop in a plugin directory into your source tree and have it be discovered and have configure options and do all that stuff, and also allows you to uh, sort of like the 
this, and some of this is modeled after design after how the PHP stuff works, you can have a source directory outside of your main source tree that's intended to be a plugin for your, for your regular project, and you can run a command in there, and it will generate all of the autoconf and automake foo that you need it to generate for that. So all you've got to do is have a little registration file saying, I'm a plugin. Uh, and it'll go, oh, yeah, well, I know how to build plugins for this. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of boilerplate uh, autoconf files that people stick in their plugins. Um, so that's great. Uh, what, how do we actually use this? Um, so installing it in the first place is, of the various things that could be a pain in the ass, the biggest one right now. Um, uh, Robert Collins has uh, kindly uh, dubbed this up for me. So if you're installed, there's two different ways that you can install it. Either as a depend or in the source tree. Uh, most of our source trees are currently installing the files into the source tree directly. Uh, but if you're installing it as a dependency, you can just apt to get install Pandora build in uh, Debian SID at the moment. Um, uh, and, you know, that'll eventually migrate to the other places. Um, go into your source directory. Uh, most of the files will exist as they need to in user share AC local, so the system will just find them naturally, and that's cool. Um, there's uh, two files that, because you're not running a couple of registration programs, uh, won't properly be uh, put in. You don't actually need that auto run.sh, but it's one that we provide and works. Auto reconf uh, should also work on a reasonably modern system. Uh, but the config what? Ooh. Oh, all right. Uh, but the config r path uh, file is one that you sort of have to copy in uh, because it doesn't get put there by another tool that you're not running. Um, so uh, that's that's the the one manual step that you're currently having to do, and I will fix that. I just haven't gotten to it yet because I've already copied the file in all of my in all of my projects. So <laughs> not not a high on my list of things to do. Um, but I do want to get that. If you're installing it in the tree, which is how we're we're doing it in ours. Uh, basically, grab a copy. Uh, the code is, is all in on Launchpad uh, in uh, the Pandora build project, uh, oddly enough. Um, and basically, it's just a matter of copying files from uh, Pandora builds M4 and config directories into your M4 and config directories, which uh, leads me to point out that you need an M4 directory and a config directory in your, in your tree. Uh, not going to ask. Uh, the system is just going to assume that those things exist. Um, and that's just the way you're going to have to do it. Uh, also, if you're doing this by hand, uh, you're going to want autoconf archive installed, or the files from autoconf archive installed on your system, uh, or there's a couple manually you have to do and readme file, blah, blah, blah. Um, but essentially just copying that stuff in. Um, uh, the third way, which is the thing that I'm currently working on, is uh, a, a script that installing Pandora build on your system uh, will install that will allow you to run it, and it will copy all of the right things into the places that you need them copied to. Um, which I want to kind of chat with some people about how that needs to work this week because there's a couple weird things there. Um, source layout, like I said, uh, source uh, hangs off of the root. So like if I'm building Drizzle, I've got a Drizzle D directory with my source in it. It's got a you know Drizzle.h file in it, a Drizzle.cc file in it. When I do a make install, it's going to install that Drizzle D binary and it's going to install Drizzle D slash Drizzle D into user include. All of that's just sort of sort of straight up in, in that manner. Um, you're going to be expected to have an M4 directory to stick all the M4 macros in and a config directory to stick the configuration auxiliary files in. Um, uh, and uh, it's going to be set up to use a, a config header, uh, which in general, anybody, whether you're using Pandora build or not, uh, if you're using autoconf, I highly recommend including the config.h uh, first in all of your, uh, in your code files so that you make sure that uh, the defines that need to get set to make features that autoconf has found for you operate if it needs to set a define to operate a feature on your system get set before you accidentally include something else which might include that thing before your define gets set. So it's just a really, uh, it's one of those things where you could choose to do it some other way, but it's not really going to gain you much other than pain. Um, so I highly recommend that. Um, uh, you will use automake in your build. It's just the way that it's going to do. If you're going to use vendor build, you will use libtool. That's just the way your build's going to work. Um, this is uh, a Slightly cut down, I cut out a couple of things from the libdrizzle um, uh, configure.ac uh, that actually we need to cut out because they're not needed, because uh, they're actually already covered. Um, I just realized in looking at it, other than the one thing that sets a version. But this is actually a pretty much a, a fully functional uh, configure.ac file, does everything that we need it to do uh, for the libdrizzle project. Um, uh, you do some other, and actually I noticed in preparing this uh, that I'm apparently silly. Uh, that AC config aux dir, config header, and AC config macro dir, uh, those are really going to about to move into Pandora canonical target because there's no uh, actual 
it, the system really won't work if you choose other values for those. So there's no there's no actual benefit into you having to copy and paste those into your thing. So there should be even less less lines to do a a, a straightforward system. Um, pop in a Pandora Pandora canonical target. You don't have to run any uh, any parameters to it. There's a couple of flags you can give it to turn off various features, uh, and I'll I'll get those in a second. Um, and then we're providing rather than asking you to write uh, rather than giving you a generalized how to write library searching uh, things for a lot of these standard, and you can still do this, it's still autoconf, so you can still write an autoconf whatever searching thing you want to write. Um, but in general, uh, as we discover libraries that are commonly uh, used by people, uh, we're making a pair of uh, simple macros uh, have whatever it is or require whatever it is. Um, I think it's the next slide. Nope, it's not the next slide. Um, uh, have or require, uh, have will check for it and not die if you don't have it. Uh, require will uh, die at, at configure time if you don't have the thing that you've decided to require. Crazy. Um, uh, and then you tell it where your make file is and, and the output. So um, that works. Um, these are the, the sum total of, of options that you can give to Pandora canonical target. Um, you can tell it you're using a new lib. Um, if you happen to be using a new lib, you can tell it that you require a C++ uh, compiler. I would like to point out that uh, although autoconf natively has a thing that will search for a C compiler and die if you don't have one, it has a thing that will search for a C++ compiler. It does not have a thing that will die if you don't have a working C++ compiler. I don't know why that is. Uh, actually, I do. It's because in the GNU coding standard it says you shouldn't use C++. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, guys. Think the cat's out of the bag a little bit. Um, and that's actually one of the other things is that the auto tools are designed for the GNU project and for the needs of the GNU project. It just happens that all the rest of us use them. Um, so anyway, so require C++ will uh, will quite happily error out very quickly in your in your configure step if there's no C compiler installed. And I believe it might even suggest what the appropriate packages uh, are to install on uh, on reasonable systems because they're not always um, if you don't know what they are they're not always uh, obvious. Uh, GCC dash C++ on Red Hat and G plus anyway it's weird. Um, Ignore shared pointer should probably go away. Uh, it, that's that's an option I stuck in for for Drizzle. Um, uh, we were searching for shared pointer uh, to see if your system has a, an implementation of shared pointer, um, and I don't really want to bother searching for that. But that's it's an extra thing uh, that's going to go away. Um, for GC4.2, um, OS 10 most modern OS 10s at this point actually the most recent one has 4.2, um, but still and defaults to 4.2. The ones before that had both 4.0 and 4.2, but defaulted to 4.0. Uh, and 4.0 is a pile of garbage. Um, so uh, one of the things that we did early on is uh, add this in so that it will look specific. It will figure out that you're on OS 10 and, and look for GCC 4.2 and just use that, darn it, even if your normal CC is, is, is uh, 4.0, unless you've explicitly requested something, at which point it will vomit at you. Um, it, you can skip the visibility header stuff. Uh, we use this in Drizzle because uh, we can't build with uh, invisible symbols at the moment. Um, but I highly recommend you to make your code work uh, so that that will work. And I've got examples of how that works uh, that I can uh, show people. Uh, source and source, if, if you're a person that wants to organize your stuff so that there's a source directory uh, and then all your stuff is in that rather than hanging off the root, um, since that's a, a reasonably common pattern that people use, uh, that's a, that's a, um, a nod to, to those folks. Um, a thing which we do in Drizzle, which I actually think is an awful idea, uh, but we do it anyway, because um, I lost that, that argument, uh, is, is setting the version of your package directly from the, the version number in your revision control system. Um, but we've got macros to do that. Uh, in theory, it, it should pull a version number from any revision control system, except that it's only implemented for Bazaar. Uh, so if anybody wants to use this, this feature uh, in their system that's using Pandora Build, send me a note and we can actually uh, it will it will detect that you're using Git or Mercurial or anything else. Uh, it just won't actually sensibly pull a version number from anything. Um, so, uh, but I, I don't really recommend that as a general rule of thumb. But that's just me. Um, as I said, it's something that's in here, so I, I can be swayed that features need to exist that I don't agree with. Um, you can turn on less warnings, which means that you build only with the set of warnings that Drizzle builds with. Uh, and if you can't build with the set of dr warnings that Drizzle builds with on, um, you it, well, you're either us or MySQL. Or, um, or you should really fix some stuff. So, um, uh, but that that can be a good s median step to, so that you're not dealing with a whole bunch of stuff at first. Uh, warnings always on 
is a thing uh, that came from, from Eric, actually, really, and in, in his interest in having uh, the warnings be turned off for tarball, tarball builds of something that aren't from version control. So if you're a developer, you should see warning equals errors and everything should, should die uh, if, if something happens. But if you've distributed a tarball to somebody, you happen to have a slightly weird system, uh, warnings should What's that? A more recent version of GCC that we haven't seen, something like that, 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 you, that the, the user will be more freaked out by that and really can't fix anything about it, and it's only going to cause them pain. So there's a, there's a setting that you can turn on. Um, so that's actually the default behavior, is that your warnings aren't turned on if you're building inside of the context of a version control. Warnings are only on if you're building inside of, of a version control branch. Um, but there's a flag that you can, you can set to say, no, in fact, always turn the warnings on in all contexts. And, uh, uh, you know, damn it. Um, it should really be all warnings on, damn it, I think is the name of that. As I mentioned earlier, there's a couple different uh, library checks. Uh, we do support more than just searching for SQLite. Um, but uh, this is sort of a, a CISC type uh, thing. It's not a Pandora have and then takes a parameter and then the library and then the chunk of code that you'd need to run to find the library and then the extra chunk of code that you'd need to do to find because then we're just re-implementing the old flexible system. So this is a, there is a, there is a specific check in the, uh, in the repo for, um, for all the libraries we care about so far and if there's other libraries that we haven't gotten in there that are at least partially common or that someone might want to use in a, on a regular basis. Um, and at this point, uh, oh, nope, all right. Uh, I didn't put a slide, I was gonna put in a, ah! um, I'm apparently running out of time. Um, uh, so I, I, will, I will refrain from picking on uh, uh, package config other than to say that in modern systems it's completely and utterly useless. Um, uh, and if you disagree with me, we can talk about it over coffee. Um, outstanding issues, things that need to still work on. The install, as I'm sure you saw, those, those install steps to get to starting to use the, the system in your, uh, uh, in your, in your build um, are, uh, it's, it's too many steps and, and it's too brittle and it doesn't really go with the I want to make this really easy for people to have a resilient uh, autoconf based uh, build system uh, there. If you're all of a sudden having, every time I upgrade and push out some new macros, you're having to copy files out of my bizarre repository into your source tree. That's sort of ass. Um, so it's just, you know, it's in, my, it's in my blob of things that I need to get done. Um, there's some autoconf archive depends that I know how to do on systems like uh, Debian and Red Hat where you're installing from packages and I can make the package depend on another package. But if you're not doing that, I've got to do some more crazy things to pull in the couple of packages there. Uh, there's also a couple of modified versions of a couple of the macros from, the macros we're using from get text size are patched. Um, and I haven't figured out a good, and they will not accept the patches because they disagree with them. Um, so I haven't really figured out what to do about that yet. Um, so that's an outstanding issue. Um, right now, I just copy in my versions into your source tree and that's the way that we do it. But that's not really the right way to do that. Um, uh, and also, with the visibility stuff, one of the needs for that is you need to have a visibility header in your, in your source tree that's available uh, that also needs to be able to be installed with your headers when you install those headers. Uh, but it needs to be specific to your project um, because uh, if, I'm, if you're including the libdrizzle headers and, and it's got visibility settings and there's uh, a libgearman headers and they don't have them, you don't want you know, namespacing, blah, 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 right? But anyway, I've got to fix that. That's on my list of things to do. And I am actually over time at this point. So uh, if you have questions, uh, tackle me somewhere, and I will be happily talk about this for a long time. So thank you all.